it is full screen, don't worry, it's just... See, there you go. Ta-da! Full screen. Um, it's just the menu being weird. Does a victor the spoils? Oh yeah, I remember now. We had this little issue, didn't we, with France being dicks. Um... <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, I know how to fix this. What we actually need to do is play, load up the game with Spain. <coughs> mm. Single player. Um, Spain. Kingdom of Spanien. Uh, where are you? Kingdom of Spain, there we go. Start. Anfangen. We need to let France know who the fuck is boss. Which means I need to open the area console. Oh shit, now what was it? I think it was accept all, wasn't it? Haha, excellent. Now then. Ooh. We have a cool background. I never noticed that before. Look at that. Anyway. I've never I naturally I've never played as Spain before, so. <coughs> I don't know why you would. Um but hey. Right, France. Oh. Shit. We lack the 85 funds <laughs> require. Okay, more cheats then. Uh, what was the money? What was the code? Was it cash? No. Um, money? No, that's money. Money. Thanks for the dough. There we go. <laughs> not very, not very creative cheat codes, are they? That has to be said. Demand territory, you fuckers. Thank you. <laughs> There we go. Fucking France, Jesus Christ. Right, okay. Right, well, we're just, you know, Kingdom of Spain. We just have to load up the one that says Kingdom of Spain. That one, Germany. Hopefully the AI won't have fucked everything up while I was playing in Spain. Where is Dave from? I am Klingon. Couldn't you tell? There we go. Right. Spain's back to normal, as I intended it to be. And we still got Perpignan from France, because fuck France, that's why. Um, okay then, so... Now that's sorted. I, I'll let Denmark keep Norway, because... Uh, what? Just whatever. <laughs> I don't really care. Spain, however, was a bit of an issue. Um, <coughs> so Russia's kind of okay. They're just minding their own business, and we really don't care about them. Um, they kind of like us anyway. They're plus 59 relations, so whatever. We have the UK on our side now. They've got a few divisions up and running. Look at that. Well, some of this is Ukrainian, apparently, but, you know. Um, I've got a load of leftover divisions just hanging around, like just fucking everywhere in Europe right now. <laughs> just everywhere. Look at them, <laughs> like toys from the Kaiser's toy box that just left or like lying around. Um, yeah. So we've got the UK on our side. We've got France on our side. We've got Spain. We've got Portugal who joined in. Um, luckily, because that means now we have the Azores. Because previously we didn't have a mid-Atlantic port we could use. Um, so. Um, I don't suppose the Caribbean Federation would be willing to join us. Already a member of our military alliance with the... Uh, uh, right, yeah, I forgot about that. Um, so yeah, we've got the Azores now because Portugal joined us. Um, we've obviously got... Austria, 
we've got Lithuania, we've got White Ruthenia, who did rebel against us actually, but we crushed them. Um, and we've got the Ukraine as well, so. This also means we've got most of Africa, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah. Yeah, not bad, honestly, not bad at all. Um, Bartia Commune, what are you doing then? Are you at war with anyone? No, you're not. Huh. Well, as soon as you go to war with someone, Bartia Commune, I'm gonna kick your ass, fucking commies. Right. Oh, well, the AOG still exists, that's nice. They usually disappeared by this point in the game. <laughs> Swallowed up by the Ching over here. Who really haven't done much this entire game, actually. Except I think all they've really done is lose to other Chinese factions. Mongo no, sorry, not Mongolia. Fengtian Republic has gone berserk and has just rampaged across Mongolia. Um, what was Mongolia, anyway? Um, so Japan kind of control a lot of stuff, it looks like. Um, that's okay, as long as they leave us alone. They aren't communist scumbags, so we really don't give a damn. Um, we have Morocco with us as well, which is nice, I guess. Which means we control access to the Mediterranean, because we've also got the Suez Canal over here. Um, so, yeah. Basically... Our next goal is to invade America, but we can't really do that because we don't have the resources yet. We are currently building a bunch of fighter planes, apparently, and a fuck ton of ships, including um, aircraft carriers, because we lost most of ours to the sodding British. They sunk them all, bastards. We're getting some marines as well, convoy transports. Apparently we're building a coastal fort in Riga for some fucking reason. No, thank you. And we're building nuclear reactors. <laughs> nuclear reactors. Oh, yes. Because we're going to try and get some nuclear bombs sooner or later. And we're also building... What's that? Tactical bombers, apparently. Why are we building tactical bombers? No, no, stop it. We don't need any tactical bombers. Did we inherit... Because I, I think we annexed um, the Baltic state, didn't we, or something, as part of an event. And I think we might have inherited their production queue. <laughs> Which would explain why we were building a fort in Riga for some reason. <coughs> Excuse me. But I do remember ordering all those marines with the amphibi amphibious tanks. Um, so, yeah. Not much else to do now than sit in our asses and wait, I guess. Russia announces the Senate happened to them recently. Oh, the um, Spanish are restoring the monarchy and stuff. War reparations. Yay. Other shit's happening. Independent flying is an independent Wallonia. Wow, cool. Two more countries now. Both ruled by this guy. Weird. There you go. The naval forces of what? Three Schlachtschwadron. Schlachtschwadron have finished their assigned mission, which was what exactly? I have no idea. Whatever. And we got some convoy transports, cool beans. Because I think we were running a bit low on those, weren't we? Yeah. We definitely were. Ah! Oh, von Richthofen. You're mad, but I'm gonna, I intend to shoot you down at some point. Rise of flight, me old mucker, but for now. <laughs> you can research some more fighter stuff. Or, or maybe there's someone else you could get to do that who's better at it than you. I doubt it, but you never know. Check it out, we got a load of British tech teams as well because we annexed the Union of Britain. That's pretty badass. So we've got guys like Arthur Tedder now. 
and Hugh Dowding. Hell yeah. James Chadwick, Frank Whittle, Arthur Harris. Sweet. I even make sense as well. I, Arthur Harris strikes me as the kind of guy who would probably get together with the Germans to blow the shit out of the communists. Uh, no, I think Vit Richtof is still the best guy for the job. Dowding's tempting, though. One of Brazil's politicians has died. My goodness. However will we cope? Oh god, so many boxes popping up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Results of investments in national research. No immediate effect. Eh, yeah, whatever. Sometimes it gives you a br blueprint for doing that. Improved radar. Hell yeah. Air radar. That's what we want. I think, anyway. I uh, don't know, maybe... Construction engineering? No, that's not really a priority, is it? <laughs> we could start testing rockets and shit. Modern firepower, that's 1946. Aerial convoy defense. Yeah, that sounds like a good bet, actually. If we get involved in a naval war with, with America. Um, who can we get doing that, then? Not a lot of good choices, really, are there, to be honest. Luftschiff Hals Zeppelin. There we go, you can do it. End of the Spanish War. Okay. That reduces our descent. That's nice. Gain a blueprint for Night Strikes Doctrine. And increase the skill of Senga and Etelin by one and Eichel by one. Cool. Economical problems. Oh no. Although we were victorious in war against International, the War itself and, and previous economic crisis have greatly damaged our economy and thus our ability to control our vast colonial empire. Despite our effort at restoring our economy and re-establishing firm control over our colonies without serious and drastic economical and colonial restructurization program, we won't be able to do both. We may be able to keep our colonial empire in its current state, but at the price of economic slowdown. However, trying to restart and restore our economy would require serious financial cuts, mainly at the expense of our colonial administration. Time is running out and we have to find a solution. Nine! That's really bad. <laughs> Fuck. How am I supposed to maintain an arms race with the, jet, with, with the fucking Americans if this is going on? Well, that's no good. We're also not using, like, a bunch of our industrial capacity, for some reason. Oh, we need way more in the consumer goods department. Way fucking more. And some reinforcements, and supplies. And production now. And upgrades as well, oh god. All our shit's out of date. Uh, bad times for Germany. Oh, Twitch chat's broken again. Hold on. Right. Uh, it's broken at my end, Toy Killing. It's not broken at your end. Um, it keeps, it keeps, it, 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 Twitch chat, chat keeps dropping for me and not working. Um, I just have to refresh the page to get it to work.
Oh my goodness. More reading. Oh my god, I can't believe I stopped playing Morrowind because it was too much reading. Uh, Kaiserbund Project. Um, under patronage of the liberal Forstrichtliche Forsch? No, Forst. Fucking hell. Forstrichtliche Volkspartei and Social Democrats of the SPD, Hjalmar Schlacht. No, sorry. Hjalmar Schacht. The former state secretary for finance in von Papen's government in years 1934 to 37 introduced his ambitious colonial plan that promises to greatly reduce costs of colonial administration and restart our economy. His plan, dubbed Kaiser Bund Project, proposes transformation of the current German colonial empire into a chain of dependent territories with limited international sovereignty. Basically, they want to create the Commonwealth like the Brits did in real life. Um, yeah, sounds interesting. <coughs> Look at that. All Gemeine aus der Asiatische Gesellschaft tell they tell us they selected nine. This belongs to China in Treasures of the Forbidden City. <laughs> nine, nine, nine. Chili, one of our government ministers that died. Oh, who fucking cares? She's just chili. How much money do we have? Quite a bit. Um, Manfred von Reichthofen has completed his research in the home defense doctrine. Good for him. Um, secret weapon, mobile landmine is now available. And remotely controlled tanks. My goodness me. Our production's going in down the shitter as well. Oh, God. They're progressively losing the industrial capacity due to all this new economic bullshit that's going on. Um, not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Recon skirmish thingy. Do it. Kaiserreich colonial policy. Fuck me. Okay, right. Kill the Reichstag. Or we'll go for the Kaiserbund project. Which will increase my descent by plus 12%. Jesus Christ. Let's just do it. Oh god, can you hear all that? Ah! All of the message boxes. What? Our fleet in Karimata Strait has been completely annihilated. I guess it lost supplies. I hope that wasn't too important, whatever that fleet was. Shit. Uh, status of southern Yemen. Uh, Due it to Ye Yemen or something. Middle Africa, divided into minor states. Keep everything as it is. Just fucking keep it as it is, it gives me the least descent. Somalia land. Fuck it. Restri oh, the AOG. Uh, new regime in southern China. Yemen, good stuff, cool beans. What? Aiden? Oh, no, no, okay, that's fine. New order in China, yep. So what happened there then? We have national China, apparently. Fair enough. My descent is now 22%. This is so fucking bad. <coughs> You're almost worse off now as we were at the beginning of the war. Oh, we lost a fleet in Gulf of Aden. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I, Christ, I don't know how the hell we're going to be able to invade fucking North America if our economy's in this state. This is, this is a joke. This is a complete joke. I've been screwed over by the event system. I don't even have enough industrial capacity to build all my ships. Or my nuclear reactor. No. 
Well, this sucks. Because I have to cancel some of my marines. Fuck, guys, this is this is kind of bad. I'm I'm seriously like the, the whole time we're faffing around with this economic bullshit. The dastardly Reds are just going berserk. You know, look, they've got 352 industrial capacity. That's way more than us. And let's have a look at intelligence. We estimate they currently have 152 infantry divisions, 18 fighter squadrons, 16 bomber squadrons, 21 battleships. Three carriers, a battle cruiser, twenty-eight submarines, twenty-five transports, and thirty-six smaller ships. I mean, seriously, guys, this is not good. This is this is incredibly bad. Like, let's have a look. Um, army maintenance costs. No, total maintenance costs. We've got one hundred and seventy-one divisions in total. I believe. 145 infantry, 7 cavalry, motorized, armored, marine, garrison, blah blah blah. We have 5 battleships to their 21 battleships. 2 carriers to their 3. 10 submarines, 8 transports, 6 battle cruisers, 5 destroyer groups. Air force maintenance costs, 12 interceptors, 12 tactical bombers and 2 naval bombers. Basically, I mean, um, is 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 I've I've played this game enough to know what's going to happen now. You see, what is basically going to happen is I'm going to keep trying to rebuild myself, and they are going to keep keep on um. They're going to keep on um, building up the whole time I'm trying to build up. And they're going to be building up faster because they've got more industrial capacity. And because they're total totalitarian dickheads, they will get the full industrial capacity bonus they should have, that we don't have because we're at peace and our economy's gone to shit. So basically the gap between us is going to keep getting bigger and bigger. And then it'll get to a point where the only way I can really win is by using nuclear weapons. And so I'll have to start researching nuclear weapons. But the problem is I won't be able to deploy nuclear weapons against them unless I get ICBMs. And to get ICBMs, you have to spend about 10 years researching different kinds of missiles and stuff, and then strate intercontinental strategic bombers and shit like that. And then the bigger and bigger and types of nuclear bombs. And before you know it, it's 1964 and the scenario is over and we're still stuck in a stalemate. Why have they not invaded Canada? Because they already did, dude. That's the Socialist Republic of Canada. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah. I, it's a bit anticlimactic and everything, but I don't think we can win. I think this is it, pretty much. I All I would end up doing right now is sitting here for like five hours. Clicking things in the economy window, basically and clicking things in the technology window and that is what would happen until we got to 1964 and that would be the end. So... Yeah, I kind of, you know, I don't really know what to do. I'm a bit of a loss because if all I'm going to be doing is sitting here for clicking through dialogue pop-up windows and, and shit, I don't really want to do that right now, to be honest with you. The fun part of the game is over. The fun part of the game where you're building up your armies and you're planning your your conquests and things like that. That's gone. That's done. We're, we're now in Cold War mode. <coughs> this always happens. Um, for example, when I played as Japan in, in regular Hearts of Iron, I conquered China. And it was sort of like, yeah, okay, now we're going to plan on how we're going to take down the Western Allies. And so I ended up invading all this shit. And then I conquered Australia, and then I took a big invasion fleet across and had this big old battle where I conquered Canada and the United States. And then, once I'd done all that, it got to the point where Germany was defeated in Europe. So Europe was divided up between Britain and France 
on one side and the Soviet Union on the other side. And all three of us had nuclear weapons. So basically you had, essentially, you had three superpowers. You had, like, NATO in the form of these two. These guys here. You had the USSR, and you had Japan, which consisted of, well, Japan, all this shit down here, including India. All this stuff down here, like, and, and also North America, pretty much. Not including Mexico, we had all this too. Which was turned into a bunch of different puppet states, like, I divided it up into different states that were puppetized by me. Um... And that was basically how it ended. I played it on for another five years in game, and it just—that's all it was. Like nobody could, nobody could attack one another. All three like superpowers had constantly been building up more and more troops, so the game was progressively running slower and slower. <laughs> and eventually, I just decided, yeah, fuck it. There we go. That's the campaign done. I conquered America, and uh, there, we go, there we go. And I'm kind of feeling like that now here, you know. We conquered France, we beat Britain, we kicked all of the syndicalists out of Europe, um, we made sure Russia didn't go completely Bolshevik, and yeah, that's sort of it really. We'll just have to deal with the fact that America remain communist, because they've got a big old Atlantic Ocean between us and them. Um, so, yeah. So to be honest with you, I think I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop this now, and um, it'll get uploaded to YouTube, hopefully, so long, as long as it's saved to Twitch. Because uh, if it didn't, oh my god, that would be annoying. Um, and this will probably be, on YouTube, the final Kaiserreich episode, essentially. Um, I was hoping to round it off on a slightly more climactic note than that, but I've just kind of been hit by this sudden realisation that, yeah, no, we can't win this at all. We really can't. Um, and that's kind of about it, really. So, yeah, there we go. We played Kaiserreich as Germany. And we did pretty well, actually, for the most part. I mean, we're getting fucked over by events and stuff now that's basically made it impossible for me to keep up. Um, you know. That's the problem, see, because we're a semi-democratic nation, and in Hearts of Iron, semi-democratic nations and democratic nations just are just can't conquer the world. It's really hard to do because of just the way those countries work. <coughs> in terms of, well, I mean, like in vanilla, the vanilla game, you can't even declare war on an enemy country without good reason if you're a democratic country. But the problem we have, like peacetime penalties to our industrial capacity, we have all sorts of shit like that. If you want to conquer the whole freaking world in Hearts of Iron, you have to play as a fascist or a communist, pretty much. Um, ultimately. So. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think that's, that's... That's basically it. Yeah, someone's suggesting a switch to USA, suicide everything, switch back to Germany. No, no, man. That is cheating. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna cheese it that much. Um, yeah. So um, that's it, basically. That's it. That's all she wrote. Um, thank you for watching slash you know being here while I stream. Um, let's play Kaiserreich as Germany and. Um, we might come back to Hearts of Iron again in the future, probably distant future. I'm, I've done three playthroughs of this now, um, so it'll probably be a, what, a quite a good long while before we come back to Hearts of Iron, but maybe someday. Maybe Hearts of Iron 4 when that comes out, actually, that might be quite fun. You know, provided it's not buggy as shit like most Paradox games are when they come out, but hey, whatever. Um, and yeah, you know, that's kind of it, really. Um, thanks for watching, guys. And for you folks on the stream, we'll, we'll go play something else, <laughs> basically. Um, there you go, I'll, I'll knock in the final save game. Kaiserreich, Germany, LP, end. There you go. Right, then that's it, TTFN.
I guess. Well, I'll feed it to you, I should say. Tschüss.